What are some not fun facts? Story 1. For generations, the indigenous peoples of South American used blow darts laced with paralytic plant extract to hunt their prey. In the 1800s, English physicians who interacted with these indigenous South Americans recognized the possible uses of this paralytic agent, now known as tubocararine, as an anesthetic agent for surgeries. Physicians noticed that animals under the influence of tubocurarin would become temporarily immobilized but would recover after a period of paralysis. According to these physicians, this discovery would revolutionize surgery as an anesthetic agent. So confident were they in their discovery that one of the physicians volunteered to undergo surgery under the influence of tubocurarin to demonstrate its effectiveness. Unfortunately, he failed to realize that, although the drug was an effective paralyzing agent, it did not have any effect on the sensory receptors of the body. So he felt every cut of the surgery without being able to move or do anything about it. Story 2. If you shine a flashlight smartphone on a newborn sea turtle for too long, which could be only minutes, it will start crawling around in circles. Known as the ring of death, it means that the turtle's eyesight has been permanently damaged due to mistaking your lights for the moon that guides it to the sea. By doing this, you have doomed the sea turtle to death right after birth. Story 3. There's a plant in Australia called the Jimpy Jimpy tree that has hairs all over it that are small enough and are compared to hypodermic needles. And whenever a person touches the plant, these hairs stick to your skin and inject a toxin. That causes a pain compared to the affected area being covered in acid and set on fire. And what makes it worse is that the pain lasts months to years. Story 4. You may have heard on several occasions that coal fire plants release more radiation than nuclear plants. And it's true, but the reason why is a bit disturbing. Nuclear power plants are closed systems, so whatever radiation that comes from it has to punch its way through several tons of steel and concrete. Coal fire plants are not closed systems. They dig stuff out of the ground and burn it, releasing all waste to the air. Coal goes through very minimal processing before it's burned compared to other sources of fuel. After it is dug, the coal is washed, and mostly that gets rid of impurities such as sulfur and rocks of various minerals. However, there always remains a trace of impurities, and those impurities can be made up of naturally occurring radioactive elements, such as radium. The presence of radium in coal is usually in very small trace amounts. But when a coal fire plant burns 9,000 tons of coal every day, it adds up, which means it releases more radiation than a nuclear power plant. And it's more dangerous because that radiation is coming from particles that are just out there, floating around in the air, which you can inhale, by the way. Story 5 The Spanish flu was one of the most lethal pandemics in history, edited out the most. There are lots of elements that determine the deadliness of these various diseases and too much uncertainty in death tolls to say for sure which disease was the most lethal. People who caught it bled from their ears, experienced nausea and extreme fever, their skin turned shades of blue, and experienced extreme pain from the slightest touch. It caused internal hemorrhaging. 18 to 35 adults' immune systems which would typically be considered the strongest, would react so strongly that their bodies would fill up with antibodies and fluid, literally drowning the infected with their own defense mechanism. This happened for a specific reason. See Peekman's comment. Story 6. Astronomers here, despite science fiction feeling otherwise, currently, we have no technology to stop an asteroid from hitting Earth. We are lucky that the dinosaur-destroying sized ones are so rare at this point in the solar system's history that we have, probably, found most of the ones of concern. That said, you probably have asteroids that can destroy a city and hit us once a century or two, which would obviously be devastating if it hits in the right place. And yeah, you can't find all of the ones of that size. The Russian meteorite a few years ago, for example, came from the direction of the sun. When it happens, all you can hope for is it hits a super remote area 
where there will be minimal damage, like the Tunguska event of 1908. Story 7. Ford Motor Company dumped 166,000 tons of toxic waste in a Ringwood, New Jersey Native American community in the late 60s, early 70s. And we only have until July 29th to make public comments stating that Ford needs to remove the toxic waste and address the health crisis that resulted from Ford's dumping. The toxins are leaching towards the Wanuck Reservoir, which serves millions of New Jersey residents, including Jersey City. The plan is to leave the toxins and to let them continue to leach towards a major water supply and to not deal with the illness's result. This is a time bomb that has been going on for decades. Story 8, 97% of firearms-related crimes in the U.S. are committed using stolen firearms. So stop irrationally trying to punish the rest of us law-abiding citizens by limiting our constitutional freedom with stupid common-sense gun laws, including limiting where we can carry a firearm to defend ourselves and those that we love. What greater rift is there than that? Gun-free zones. You're dead if a bad guy attacks you zone. Seriously, think about it. Last year, over 10,000 Americans were killed by drunk drivers. Should everyone else have their ability to drive vehicles or buy alcohol be suppressed and criminalized? And no lectures about how we have laws that limit alcohol purchases. The only one is age. A convicted killer can still legally buy alcohol as long as they're 21. And getting a driver license and buying a car is super simple too. Hell, in California, you can be here illegally and still do it. Think, people. Don't just react emotionally. Story 9, Autulin is the single most potent neurotoxin in the entire world. Orders of magnitude more so than even the most concentrated chemical weapons. Just a few nanograms eaten, injected, or inhaled is all that it takes to eventually kill an adult human. It kills you by inhibiting your voluntary motor nervous system, slowly paralyzing you until you can no longer breathe. The typical starting symptoms are droopy eyelids, blurred vision, trouble swallowing and speaking, and an all-around weakness. Easy to mistake as something you can recover from on your own if you're uninformed. Without help, though, you're as good as doomed. This poison is produced by a strain of bacteria, botulinum. This bacterium reproduces by spreading spores. These spores are found in a dormant state nearly everywhere on Earth. They're constantly around you, all the time. They're in your lungs, even. However, oxygen prevents them from activating. Whenever and wherever they find an oxygen-free environment with a food source and low acidity, though, they activate and begin producing the toxin. Since canned foods preserve food by keeping oxygen out, food canning facilities are equipped to sterilize the cans and the food extremely thoroughly. If they don't, they can potentially cause a public health crisis right then and there. The telltale sign of a bad can is any visible bulging or distortion, as the bacteria produces gas as a byproduct. That's why they tell you to throw them out without opening them if they start doing that. Since it's so potent, though, it's possible to get a lethal dose, even if the can isn't bulging yet. Babies who have yet to develop a proper gut microbiome can also end up with botulinum growing in their intestines if they eat the wrong foods, resulting in a fatal condition if untreated called floppy baby syndrome. This is the main rationale behind avoiding certain foods for newborns. Story 10. Unintentionally got a knife through LaGuardia last year, got it through Ataturk Airport in Turkey, and got it through the airport in Qatar. On my way home, I got it through Qatar again, but got pulled out of line in Turkey by this woman who looked more like a man than I do. She pulled it out of my wallet, and I nearly shat. She barely spoke English but looked at me and said, This problem, sir, please step aside. Cuisines from that movie Midnight Express passing through my head. I had no idea I had a knife on me. It was a credit card knife I completely forgot I owned that I kept in my wallet which I know for a fact went through the TSA's machine in LaGuardia. Luckily, the Turkish security lady was nice to me, just pulled me aside and said, 
We take this, you go. Potentially dodged a bullet there, but it really made me think about what others are getting through security. Story 11. Thinking of World War II, we remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs. Bombing of Tokyo was even worse. An aerial armada of 334 B-29 bombers took off from newly established bases in the Mariana Islands bound for Tokyo. In the space of a few hours, they dropped 1,167 tons of napalm-filled incendiary bombs on the Japanese capital, killing more than 100,000 people in a single strike and injuring several times that number. It was the highest death toll of any air raid during the war, including Hiroshima and Nagasaki. By comparison, the bombing of Dresden a month earlier had resulted in around 25,000 deaths. Story 12 There's an area in the Pacific Ocean where if you're in a boat or plane of any kind and crap hits the fan, the closest humans to you are the astronauts on the ISS because you're thousands of miles from land and humans in every direction. And the ISS is only about 240, 250 miles from Earth. Nobody would be able to help you. No communications would work unless it was SATCOM. And even then, people have to be specifically listening for you, which they wouldn't be. If you get stranded in this area called Point Nemo, you're done. Cruises, downed flights, anything in this general region is screwed if they get stranded. One could theorize Flight 370 could be underwater in this general region, which is extremely unlikely, but not out of the realm of possibility. Story 13. Everybody lies, cries, and dies. There's simply enough suffering for everyone, and what's most tragic about it, we as humans are the cause of most of the world's suffering. If we could collectively try to be better and kinder to one another, to love each other as we love ourselves, and not divide ourselves by the most trivial of differences, the ever-increasing depression rate and self-destruction rates would greatly diminish. That's a sad fact, mainly because the idea of the collective human race deciding to finally be better to one another is so far-fetched that it rings like an impossible utopia. Humans thrive on conflict. Ergo, there will always be conflict. These kinds of things really bothered me when I lost a loved one to self-destruction and contemplated deeply about the depths of pain we're putting each other through in some instances. The song Imagine by John Lennon comes to mind. One can imagine, and yet we never achieve the kind of world he dreamed of, that I dream of. The world will never live as one without greed, selfishness, and hate based on ignorance. That's the saddest fact I know. Story 14. Wales didn't exist before 1932. It was invented as a way for the English to feel better about their own lives. You know, like, it could be worse. We could live in Cardiff. Unfortunately, it worked too well. People from England wanted to see just how terrible a country could be, so they started planning trips. In order to maintain the subterfuge, the government was forced to consult with the Dutch regarding land reclamation and created the landmass we know today. It was seeded with unpopular alcoholic actors who lived in ramshackle huts and were told to, and this is from official documentation, just roll with it. Their commitment paid off, and in 2012 the UN recognized Wales as an independent state, one with an utterly incomprehensible beauty to their tongue. How the billions of sheep got there is as yet unknown. Witchcraft is suspected. Story 15. At the start of the war on terror, some politicians were pushing for an extension of status hostis humanis generis to illegal enemy combatants, and failed. Now this status from international maritime law declares you as an enemy of humanity in general. This strips you of all rights. Now the ironic part is that originally this status was applied to two types of people, torturers and pirates. And then the U.S. started using enhanced interrogation, a fancy word for torture. Now Nuremberg trials after WW2 stated that following orders is not a valid defense. So it is technically legal to murder Bush, Obama, Trump in international waters and airspace, and also any individual that participated in or aided that program. Story 16. We're one of 8.7 million species on Earth. 
We're one out of eight planets in the solar system, and our sun is one out of 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Best estimates accumulate to more than a hundred million galaxies in the observable universe, and so on. Our existence is meaningless, and just the mere fact that we can comprehend our existence is a result of biological developments in order to be able to survive better. Society and money are mere illusions humans have created to survive better in the environment. We lead constant wars followed by brief periods of peace for pitiful reasons like money, territories, and so on. Most people probably don't know they are the same species and instead divide themselves into non-existent fictions like nations and create cultures. Story 17 Diamonds are common and statistically worthless. They are controlled by monopolies to keep their price tag. Also, there is no such thing as ethically mined diamonds. They are either mined via slave labor or terrible working conditions. Diamonds labeled as ethical are shipped to a front that appears up to code and passes ethical standards, and the blood diamonds are shipped and sold through that front to pass certification. Africa is rich in wealth and as such should be home to the wealthiest countries, but most successful mines and manufacturing are owned by foreign businesses. Politicians that have attempted to remove said foreign businesses are assassinated under mysterious circumstances. Story 18. We get, on average, about 77 years alive on this planet. You will spend around one-third of that time asleep or otherwise indisposed. You will be forced to spend at least another one-third in school, at work, attending awful obligations, or otherwise trapped doing something and wishing you weren't. Transit, meals, paying bills, standing in queue, using the latrine, and other mundane functions will eat another one-tenth of your life. That leaves you with, on average, about 1,949 weeks to have a life. 24 years of you time. Most of that 24 years is wasted on being a stupid child or a fragile geriatric. Your physical and mental peak will occur when others can best extract value from you. Unless you are born rich, you will never really have the luxury to enjoy your you time beyond the desperate recovery state bordering exhaustion after pouring your value into your master's pocket. The best most of us can hope for is chemically assisted escapism or mental illness. For an average of 24 years per person, we squander what freedom we may be lucky enough to have to be ourselves. And if you're old enough to read this, odds are you have wasted nearly half of that leisure already. Do you still have enough time to be you? Story 19. Well, there is Huntington's disease. While it's relatively rare, it's a devastating diagnosis. Symptoms will start in the 30s, first your motor coordination, then your mental abilities slowly deteriorate. Then you learn about how there is a 50% chance you unknowingly passed it down to your children. That is 50-50 for each one of them. Oh, and since the condition is caused by what is called a triplet repeat of the DNA bases CAG, you can measure how many repeats there are. The more it repeats, the earlier the disease breaks out. A terrifying diagnosis. Scrubs did an episode about this. Worth a watch, I think. Story 20. Not sure how true these are. I've just heard them through some Discord friends. The reason dogs love their squeaky toys so much is because the sound reminds them of a tiny animal being killed. Remember, they used to be wolves. In some parts of Australia, nearly 90% of koalas are suffering from chlamydia. Unless a vaccine is developed, the species could go extinct. Figs are pollinated by wasps. When the eggs hatch, they are all female except for one. The girls all mate with their brother and then leave him to die as they go out and lay their own eggs. Story 21. When Mother Shoebills give birth to two chicks, she only raises the strongest. She knows who the strongest one is, because the strongest chick immediately starts physically assaulting the timid one as soon as each of them leaves their respective egg, the timid one will flee to the mother for comfort and protection from its abusive sibling. However, instead of consoling it, the mother will instead beat the timid chick to death with her bill 
and leave its mangled little corpse to rot, while she continues to raise the strong chick. I learned about this from a Netflix documentary on the wild animals of Africa. I am so grateful I was born a human being, like holy crap. Story 22. We have already committed to losing the Arctic ice cap, and very soon, due to thermal inertial delays in climate, even if we stopped emitting CO2 immediately and completely, the oceans would continue to warm for decades, but Arctic summer ice volume is headed to zero in less than 15 years, at which point the albedo will go from 0 0.6 sea ice to 0 0.006 open ocean, and the incoming sunlight will be absorbed 10 times more than it is now during 24-hour summer days, which will cause the Arctic to warm even more rapidly, even without CO2-induced warming. I'm not saying that we should give up, but the time for we need to do something in the future or this bad thing will happen is long past. Now it's all about coping with the problems we've already baked in. Story 23. Not sure if it counts, but in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the vast majority of American media was monopolized by one guy, William Hearst. Hearst had a saying that went something like, don't let facts get into the way of a good story. He encouraged his writers to fabricate parts of stories to benefit the people paying him. This period in American history is known as one of the most boring periods, pre-WW1. But through his manipulation of the media, he convinced the entire population that the world was falling apart around them and was even able to help start the Spanish-American War when the USS Maine unexpectedly blew up by making up a story of how the Spanish blew up the ship before any investigation even happened. Story 24. All life on Earth will cease to exist seven billion years from now due to the fact every one billion years the sun's luminosity increases by ten percent, and if that won't destroy Earth, then the universe will when it eventually implodes back into itself or either rips itself apart due to it infinitely expanding with the speed of light the fastest speed possible in the universe, making it impossible to travel to parts of the universe and practically shrinking the observable universe. Story 25. There's a wasp that lays its eggs on a spider, and the larva will slowly eat away at the spider's insides. Once the spider is almost brain dead, the larva manipulates its body to build them a web they can live on until they mature, essentially zombie spider. But wait, there's more. The web the spider makes is very weak, so the larva will also force its brain-dead host to build an even sturdier web with a more intricate design that the spider itself did not originally know how to spin. Story 26. Your cats will see if you are breathing by checking your nose, mouth, or by lying on your torso. If you are not breathing, they will proceed to eat you. Similar with small dogs, but those wankers don't even check. There is this one story of a lady who had a seizure that rendered her completely paralyzed, even in the face, and her small dog ate her skin while she was still conscious. Have fun with that one. Story 27. Surgical anesthesia doesn't stop pain from occurring. It paralyzes the body and renders you unconscious, so you aren't aware of what's going on. Anesthesiologists are paid a lot, because they have to be extremely precise in dosage, as we have no idea how anesthesia makes you go unconscious. Too much, and you might not be revived. Too little, and you will be 100% aware of what's going on. As someone who woke up screaming in the middle of a knee operation, it's very unpleasant if they get it wrong. Story 28. Hay contamination is a huge problem for horse farmers. This occurs when the feces of a raccoon is infected with a disease called EPM, gets mixed into a crop of hay. EPM is an incurable disease that effectively rots away the spinal column of the infected horse. There is no good way to prevent or predict contamination. Some treatments exist, but they are incredibly expensive, and most times the horse ends up being slowly and painfully crippled until they are finally euthanized after they can no longer get on their feet. Story 29. It's likely that the reason we haven't discovered intelligent life outside our solar system, or haven't been discovered by them, 
is that by the time a civilization is advanced enough to broadcast radio waves, one of the few things that could travel outside our solar system, they also discover nuclear energy, thus nuclear weaponry, and they don't survive long past then. Also, it's statistically more likely that the human race dies out via U.S. nuking ourselves, or one of many other preventable disasters than it is that we continue to exist hundreds of years into the future. Story 30. There is a genetic lung and liver disease called alpha-1 antitrypsin that prevents your lungs and liver from generating their own enzymes, which are used to help heal and regenerate. My mom had it, and it required her to get an IV every week from a nurse who came to her house. She always had to sleep with oxygen and take several other meds to help with her breathing. Her lungs became so weak that she stifled a cough and popped a hole in her lung. She passed away shortly after. The scary part is most people never know they have it until they notice breathing or liver problems. I've been tested and thankfully don't carry both genes required to activate it. Story 31. Diabetes. Mellitus destroys your organs from the inside out by attacking your vasculature. All the vital piping that ultimately delivers oxygen and nutrients to your organs slowly scars off, leaving them to slowly die. This is why you develop cerebral vascular disease, peripheral vascular disease, coronary artery disease, renal failure, neuropathy, and eye issues, especially retinal issues, with diabetes, among other things. Yay, 